today we have damage all right so welcome to the carnage of broken parts i tell myself what to do no nope, we're not gonna do that no nope, no nope. wait what why not and i tell a lie no worries the car is in good hands with me <laughs> In this video, two things are messed up. The M3 and my eye. <coughs> so we're gonna repair things here and there. So let's quickly find out what happened. But first... Okay, so today we're gonna do a coolant flush on a Mini Cooper. No, nope, we're not gonna do that. No, nope, no. Nope. Wait, what? Why not? Look at this. Yeah, but I mean... Nope, nope. Just nope. All right, everyone, welcome to the M3, which has damage. As you can see, the front splitter has had a huge whack, completely ripping this piece off. Also damaging the splitter completely. And now it's just hanging completely loose. Uh, this part of the under tray is destroyed as well. We can see a piece of plastic hanging there. That would need to be replaced as well. That's part of the under tray. The splitter had a hard life anyway. Now it has completely failed. So yeah. We're gonna get it replaced, or we're going to take it off, I'm not sure yet. Well, this obviously is a very good time to take it off, but um, yeah. So that's part one of the damage we have. So the other thing that needs to be repaired on the car is the head-up display over here. The head-up display hasn't functioned at all during my ownership. And look what happens if we select the head-up display. And here it says that it's checked off. But if we select it, it simply doesn't respond. I then diagnosed the car with ISTA and then indeed it threw a code. This is what I saw. So I'm afraid it's going to be a dashboard out job. I hope not, of course, but we'll see what happens. I'm going to start out by removing the instrument cluster to see if the connection with the head-up display is okay. So that's the splitter and the head-up display gone, but wait, there is more. I was driving on the highway and the car suddenly went bang, and that's when I lost power. I was able to make it home, luckily, and I already suspected it was a blown charge pipe, which indeed was the case. As you can see here. It's interesting to me that even the bolt holding down the charge pipe is completely gone. A quick little fix by installing, by ordering and installing a new bolt, and then I should be on my way. All right, so upon further inspection, I found, I actually found the bolt of the charge pipe. Look at that. There it is. No idea what it's doing there. It should be over there. But yeah, there we go. So I'm going to fish it out and um, see what's up. I got you. All right, so upon further inspection, I found out that the threads of the part where the charge pipe goes into are stripped. I'm not sure what idiot did that, but we would need to repair those threads. God, who did that? That idiot was me. So off camera, I went ahead and removed the charge pipe to uncover the broken threads over here. These are the threads that I've destroyed. So what I did is I bought these tools. With these tools, we're gonna repair the threads of the turbo inlet, specifically with this bad boy. With this, we're gonna retap the threads so that we can reinsert this screw holding down the charge pipe. So let's give this a go. All right, so first up, we're gonna lube up the hole. That's what she said. We're gonna use a bit of lubricant. So make sure to not get anything in the turbo here. So now we're gonna carefully use this tap to go ahead and retap the thread. Make sure to get it in very straight. So now it's starting to grip. Slowly let the tap do the work. It's funny because it looks like I know what I'm doing. I'm not actually. It's going nice and straight. How I like it when I tap things. 
All right, now I don't feel any resistance anymore. So that means we're all the way through. So now we're gonna take it out again. There we go. So let me show you how it looks like now. Now you can see some brand new threads. So we're gonna clean it up and then test fit the bolts. All right guys, so it's actually another day. I test fitted the bolt off camera and I am afraid to admit that it didn't work. So this is supposed to be an M6 bolt, but look what happens when I screw it in the turbo. So now it's bottoming out and as you can see, I can simply twist it on through. See, it's not tightening anymore. And if I simply pull on it, I can simply pull it out, which is really weird because according to BMW, this is an M6 bolt. This bolt, which is coming from over here. <sighs> Boring. Here's a quick little launch to keep you awake. <laughs> So let's continue the video. This bolt is also an M6 bolt. So watch what happens when I screw this in the turbo. So that's now in there, not fully, but I can pull whatever I want and this thing is not going anywhere. So I'm not sure what's, what's going on with the, um, with the other one as they're both M6 bolts. So what I did is I ordered one of these to use as the bolt holding down the charge pipe to the turbo. Because with this bolt, I can't get it to work. I read on the forums online that other people had this issue as well, and that other people went with another bolt as well. So I'm going to do that too with the other bolt I just showed, and then we simply carry on. All right, so there we have it. Everything installed again. As you can see, I've installed a temporary bolt over there the one holding down the pipe of the air intake. I ordered the exact one down there again so that it's going to go in its original spot in the end. So now for a quick test drive to see if we have boost failures. Woo! No boost failures, baby. No boost failures. So now let's continue fixing the head-up display. So the other part that's not working is the head-up display. So we're going to undo the cluster gauge to check the connection of the cable to the head-up display. So we're going to undo two T20s. And now, we can carefully pop this out. All right, so this. This is the cable connecting the cluster gauge to the head-up display. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to simply pop this out and reinstall it to see if that does anything. If not, we'll probably have to take out the whole dashboard. Fun! Alright, so I reinstalled the cable. Now let's see if that does anything. Um... No. No. It, it worked! <laughs> what? Wow. I, I can't believe that. That actually worked. Oh, that's awesome. See, there it is. Oh my goodness. All right, um, well, thank God I didn't have to take out the whole dashboard. All right, well, good. Um, I don't even know what to say. I'm just, I'm just uh, very happy. All right, well, I'm going to go take this bad boy outside and shoot some more content for you guys. Oh, by the way, I found this behind here. Wait. 
So weird. Not sure what that's doing there, but um, yeah. If you want to cop one yourself, go check out my merch. I mean, that works pretty well. Cool. All right, still awake after that exhilarating content? This will keep you awake. Alright, so now let's address the splitter. So here we have the broken piece of the splitter, and let's assess the damage from the underside of the car. Yeah, you can already see a piece of plastic hanging there. So that whole piece needs to be replaced. Um, obviously the splitter would need to be replaced. That wasn't in the best shape anyways. This is also hanging down completely uh, shot. This is completely broken, as you can see. I believe the carbon fiber piece is still in, uh, in good shape, which is good. So yeah, let's go ahead and um, remove the splitter altogether. I thought it was a bit too much anyway, so, um, so yeah, let's see how it looks without the splitter. All right, so we're gonna start out over here. This may need a bit of a clean. All right, so let me look it up how this thing is assembled. All right, so it's actually the other day. We're going to remove all these clips down here because then I would be able to remove the screws holding down the splitter to this carbon piece. I was quote unquote lucky that this piece broke off so that I was able to reach the screws holding the, holding the splitter down. Now I would need to remove the screws hiding below here. So that means I would need to take off these rib nuts and all these plastic clips down here. So we're gonna do that now. All right, so after drilling out all the clips, we're going to pop them out. All right, so now, And that's one broken splitter, boys and girls. I mean, it did have its best time already. Okay, well, this is trash now. So now I'm able to take off the rest of the screws. And that's our splitter removed. Ooh. Jesus Christ. I'm not sure what amateur installed this, but this has not been done correctly. Drilling holes in this is not the right way to do this. It is a genuine BMW part at least. Yeah, <laughs> that's not how you install these parts. It's a shame, but we're gonna make it um, look pretty again. So um, no worries, the car is in good hands with me. <laughs> Alright, so welcome to the carnage of broken parts. Unfortunately, the shop that did the install of the M Performance front splitter did a, well, not so good job. Um, so it's up to me now to um, make the install of the original parts as good as possible, which we're obviously going to get done. So let's first get the parts that we're going to reuse. Alright, so these are the parts that we're going to reuse. We're going to give them a quick and thorough clean and install them on the car again. As you can see, the part that is supposed to be over here is broken, so we're gonna order a new one. And these are the parts that are all broken and are trash. 
Let me know in the comments down below if you want me to go for a new splitter or if you want me to go for that OEM look. Whatever the case though, these carbon parts are going on the front bumper. All right, so as you can see, I gave these parts a quick clean. They're looking a lot better again. So we're gonna install these on the car. All right guys, so as you can see, I cleaned this part up and now we're gonna install these parts along with these carbon parts. We're gonna install these on the car as you can see. Kind of like the look of, of this as well, but um, yeah. We're gonna install these anyway because M performance. Yeah. He's just happy to be involved. All right, so, and this is how it looks with the carbon parts installed and the license plate as well. I mean, damn, I think this looks really good. I'm not sure if I even want the splitter back. Again, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Your opinion means a lot to me, so please let me know what you think. And now for some shots outside. Guys, I mean, come on. I think we have a winner. This looks so good. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of it. Splitter or no splitter? All right, so that was it. I kind of like the new look of it, but do let me know in the comments down below what you think. Also, for the next video, do you guys want maintenance or modifications? Let me know in the comments down below so that I can start working on the new video as soon as possible. Don't forget to cop some insane merch. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. I got you. I got you. I found you. Nope, nope, we're not gonna do that. <laughs>